I think we'd all like to hear a little bit from each of you to begin with. Uh, why don't we start with Lola? Tell us about your experiences on the movie or whatever you recall or you'd like to tell us about making it. Um, let me see if I can, uh, what I can remember. Um, it, it seems I was a whole different person from the person I am now. Well, how long, when was it made? Uh, it, around 87? 87. No, 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 it was just done very spontaneously. I don't think there was a lot of preparation in uh, beforehand. Um, I don't know how Charles found that store uh, front, uh, but he did, and there was a cat, and <laughs> I was supposed to be a gypsy, so I got gy gypsy dragged together. And it was, uh, and there were other people on the set, I remember, Harry Katukas was uh, dressed up as uh, supposedly my husband. He was a gypsy, and there were a couple of still shots I have of Harry in the background, and he's sort of looking out the window or something. And but he, it, no uh, film was taken of him, um, and uh, so it was just kind of uh, made up as it went along it seemed to me, but I see in the context of the film, Charles really already had something definite in mind. And um, that's what's so continuously shocking about uh, see, looking back and seeing uh, that Charles um, I had already thought everything out pretty much. Um, and that's amazing <coughs> to me, again. And his own performance was so fantastic. In that first shot of him where he makes an expression <coughs> that goes from naturalism to encompassing everything you've ever seen in silent films the face, and particularly, um, uh, you know, the, the uh, famous one who, who did all the monster uh, launching, uh, but even so, just, not just launching, but, but uh, what silent films look like to us now, you know, the expressions they made, and, uh, and it was, um, House of Wax was, Museum of Wax yeah. was um, truly frightening. That was the most shocking thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it was so beautiful, too. Everett, could you uh, tell us a little bit about Dolores and uh, what memories it brought back from you watching the show tonight? Or? Um, amazing memories. I mean, I would say, God. We were young ones. <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't even dirty. It was, I think it was Charles's next uh, horizon. And it was, I wonder, it's, you know, it's sad. I mean, it's weird. I wish we had started earlier. <laughs> Where might he have gone, though? I mean, that's what, but it was, Charles was experimenting with becoming a filmmaker, and I think that was his next, he would have done that had he not gone to his glory. And, and it was more like, it was like a travel along. I mean, he got the idea to do it, and then, again, like Lola said, it was just, we'd do it on the fly. My biggest regret is that there was a car crash on 7th Avenue, right, by Morton Street. And we walked past him, he said, why don't you get in drag to Dolores and get in the car? <laughs> and I was too afraid they had left it there overnight. And we, we did it on, um, <laughs> I, you know, I had by, we did it on 4X 16 millimeter with the uh, 
available items like sports film. And he, <laughs> he just got it into his head that that's the way he wanted to do it. And then it's all, like a travelogue. We did a tour of, Canada, of Vancouver, Seattle, and San Francisco, and a lot of it was done on that tour. But um, there was a hot day that we did it in, in the, the first scenes were done, the gypsy scene was among the, the very first. And we didn't really know what was what. And we, and we got the storefront, and it was in Little Italy, and the people started freaking out that this gypsy was moving in. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and now there were like threats of violence and stuff, because we did the window up, and it really looked fabulous. And then we had to tell them that it was just a movie set. And then, and then it was on the fly, and it was like I didn't have the, in the San Gennaro Festival, I didn't have the courage to run through it, so I forget who the lady was who did it. But and later, as we did it, I had more courage, and I would just go wherever I felt like going. And so. Well, <clears throat> first I'd like to, uh, I think I'm safe in uh, saying this on behalf of everyone, that in terms of Edward finding this shoebox, that I'm, I'm glad he had something left in his closet to share with us. <laughs> um, for me, you know, being called a couple of weeks ago to revisit this material, uh, and this world was just, um, I can't say I just had so much fun working with these images and these performances and remembering uh, the work we did on, you know, at the theater. And, um, you know, the way I see it, the two films are kind of two different sides of Charles in a way. The Museum of Wax is kind of a, a very lean, perfect, um, you know, it's, I see Murnau and I see, you know, the uh, Germans, uh, the silent film. And Dolores is one of the more sprawling, epic <laughs> things that the critics didn't always understand, but things like Conquest of the Universe uh, or uh, Utopia Incorporated, those kinds of shows that were just very ambitious formally and just uh, went everywhere and, you know, somehow managed to, to work. And, um, you know, the thing I take away from it, look, uh, revisiting it now, and is just, um, you know, this silly idea that I hear all the time when, when, when people talk to me about uh, <coughs> doing plays now about camp. Um, and because to me the performances, and I try to do this with the music, is you have to mean it. And the mm. performances are all about really meaning it. Of course, it's much funnier that way, and you know it's funny. But um, it's something that just I come in contact with a lot lately as people contact me. And uh, so to create a world where um, these things are really happening. There's no, there's no question about it. They're happening. 